Hello, my name is Jacqueline Jarganjai, and tonight I have an amazing, hardworking woman who is an international award-winning actress, a radio presenter, an event host, and an activist. The beautiful Mariam Okoli. <laughs> How are you, my Hi, love? Hi, Jacqueline. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> How has your day been? Long day, as usual. Anyone who knows me knows that I keep running around <laughs> everywhere, especially during this time. It's yes. the political season and so many stuff are going on, but yeah. So I've given a brief insight into um, what Mariam Okoli does. She has been breaking barriers, like you heard the list of all the things that she does. But I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about yourself for people that obviously a lot of people have heard about you with you winning awards and congratulations on being nominated by the ladies in media she's been nominated as one of the 60 most influential women <laughs> in the media thank you yes girl so please um let us know about yourself thank you so much Jacqueline so my name is Maria Mokoli like she mentioned and I am an international award-winning actress um, I recently got uh, my first international award from the U.S. Hollywood Golden Film Award from a movie that I was featured in called Bibit. Janga, dere nyu jigen dara, si jamano bu nyek ni. Puma wa, katak chibat. Jigen dal mo sonar. Hey, luna nyek asmahari. <laughs> that same movie also got me uh, win this competition from Romania, the long story shots. And recently, obviously, I was also recognized as one of 60 most influential women in media within Africa from Ghana. So I'm really privileged to be recognized on all these platforms. I am a radio host and I host a mentorship program called the Let's Talk Show with other shows as well on Afri Radio. I am an activist for women and girls' rights and yes, basically that is me. <laughs> um, as an activist, which issues are you most um, concerned with and why? Mainly women and girls issues because um, as we know in Gambia that is what is more prominent when it comes to issues that are still um, going on in our country for centuries and centuries. Though we have a lot of young activists and activists that have been there way before I was born fighting the same cause that is still existing for instance child marriage, you know, um, FGM domestic violence, sexual harassment, and the list goes on. These are daily issues that we, some women are still living with. Despite laws, it's still not effective as we want them to be because people still get their way out of it. And as children, young girls as well, um, you know, they get harassed most of the time. Some girls still don't have access to quality education or they get pulled out from school to be married off. And these are all societal issues that I am really um, concern about that is why I'm in this fight and it all started when I was 12 growing up in a community like Brikama where we had very little opportunities and privileges we took it upon ourselves to create those opportunities for ourselves reach out to media platforms use our skills and our knowledge to relate information that were affecting us okay. um, so um, how does your activism um, influence the rest of your work. Can the activism be separated from the acting and presenting or are they all linked together? Basically they're all linked together. Anyone who's been following my work, even the movies that I was featured on for some reason is always activism related because most of the major movies that I got featured on are either on child marriage or issues that are relating to women issues. So it's all related. Uh, for me, my purpose is to relate information on every medium that I am on, either the media or my performing art platforms. I use them to really create. It, um, I use them to create awareness and educate people. So it's all linked. 
when I'm on radio, I sound like an activist that I am. When I'm acting, basically, it is also part of it. And yes, when you see me on the streets, on campaigns, leading and all of that, it's basically the same work. Perfect. I love how you're like breaking barriers and all of that. Um, could you just give us a brief um, explanation on your career to date? And when did you first realize that um, you wanted to work in the public view? And how did you get to where you are today? What achievements are you um, also proud of? Yeah. So the whole journey started when I was 12 from my primary school. I went to a Catholic school in Brikama called Presentation. And at first, people would doubt if really I had the confidence to do what I'm doing because I was very shy and very quiet. Really? Yes. <laughs> But we had this headmistress who actually introduced me to acting and my first performance was horrible. I almost fainted because of the, the crowd fear that I had and everything. But she pushed me to act lead role after that and um, I got to really see what she was trying to get me into and I fell in love with it because I got to realize that acting was basically just passing information or communicating with people but on a different level. So after that, I'm like, okay, I think I'm interested in this. And I took it up. I joined several organizations that were in the school, like Lender Hand Society, um, Children Against AIDS, and I became a peer health educator as well, where we also dealt with reproductive health and sexual related topics that were a taboo to deal with. So you can, you can say I was very rebellious because I would talk about things that people wouldn't talk about on a daily basis. But this was all geared towards educating people on information that was relevant that was not also talked about you know so um, that is where it all started I got um, our radio platform on um, a huge show in Brikama FMB where we started our radio campaigns on child's right related issues and there we go I, I thought you know what I think I'll join these three professions and make it my career because I love what I was doing and um, immediately after high school I started work um, and here we are today, it's getting me where I am. You have to say thank you to your head teacher that helped yes. you get over your fear because <laughs> I, I know like I'm one person that it's, yeah. I have to pretend people aren't there mm. <laughs> to do certain things but I still yeah. haven't beaten the fear of public speaking. Yeah. And hopefully one day I'll get to You will. Stage. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, what challenges have you had to face or um, overcome as an African woman in, in the media industry? And are things getting easier or are they getting harder for women like in your position? Leading in uh, media in, the, in Africa, especially in Gambia, was a big challenge because we were always probably on the forefront of either reading news or presenting. We were not given the opportunity to do more, like uh, be able to handle a mixer on your own and run your own radio show. So uh, gradually I had to do away with that. I'm like, why should I be in the studio and have a guy hold down the tech for me because they feel we cannot do it. So I learned how to, and trust me, when you're in the studio, there are so many keys that you have to pay attention to and so many buttons. <laughs> but I took my time and learned how to do it. And thanks to God, we have a very good radio manager who's also very encouraging on things like that. So basically what I'm trying to say is the full independence to do your own production. Like we should be able to lead direction. We can direct a whole production we can film and edit and produce on our own these were challenges that most women were faced with but now uh, we see that it's gradually changing I'm always proud and happy when I see women holding cameras and filming you go to their offices they're editing they're producing they're directing um, we also need to be given full independence in doing our work I mean some people use women as a face uh, just to brand their company that they're empowering women, but they're not really giving them the 100% independence they need to do their work. I mean, when I come with a story that I feel needs to be published and you want to hold it back because you feel it, it's a woman's story and you don't want to push it out there because you see yourself in that story, it's not really empowering at, at all. And the freedom uh, to be able to do things as well, I think is very, very important and significant in one's growth within the media. 
So these are all challenges that we are still faced with. Some are still being harassed at their workplaces uh, in order for them to be given the opportunity to do what they want. Most of the time, you know, they get harassed or they have to weigh their choices between a sexual offer that is being given to them before they are really hired the job. So I personally know women who are still battling on going through those issues right now. And I hope as time goes on, they will speak up about it and um, get themselves out of it. And this is why I encourage women, learn the craft, know what you're doing very well, that if one tries to use you, you have an option to walk away and go somewhere else where you will be hired based on your professional. Of course. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself as having a responsibility to raise the country's profile and tell its story in Africa and beyond? A lot of growth has happened over the past few years, especially within the art. I mean, when it comes to performing art um, as an actress, I'm lucky to be part of the only theatre in the Gambia called the Ibunjan Theatre. And we produce up to standard plays. We've done collabs with other actors from the UK and we've done plays like Shakespeare's um, stories, but, you know, revived the story into our own standards. And um, I've seen growth, I've seen Gambian movies being recognized on international platforms, which was not happening a couple of years ago. I've seen actors being recognized and winning awards. You know, we have the likes of Babu Sise, who is a Gambian Hollywood actor. You know, so proud to, to know him and also look up to him as well. Um, myself and other people as well who have been recognized now. Mbebet did so well, so the producers of Mbebet, I mean Rebel and Osman Jaju and the entire crew, you know, there's hope for the art. I mean, we have the potential, we have the talent. And the same thing goes with media. I, I, I now see media houses being recognized on international platforms. I never thought um, I would ever be recognized as one of the 60 most influential women within the sub-region which is also a great plus. And I was not the only one. We had other young people within the media who were also recognized from the Gambia. So that means there has been a lot of work going on. There has been a lot of professionalism being put in our work and growth. And I see people going the extra mile, getting educated for what they're doing, which is also amazing. So there's hope. In the next few years, I see Gambia on even bigger, bigger platforms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that we have... Um a few people that you've mentioned and yourself of course that are you know putting Gambia out there it, I mean it's about time people outside internationally get to see that we have so much potential in Gambia and we have women and other people breaking barriers and stuff here so um, I wanted to ask you which other people or initiatives in the Gambia or elsewhere um, most inspire your work that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I know I have looked up to a lot of people growing up here and um, the likes of Harun Adrame obviously inspired my journey up to where I am today. He offered me a job right from high school and trained me alongside Pam and Jaisi who's my radio manager. You know, and Auntie Janet Bajan Young, the founder of Ibunjan Theatre, Babu Sisi. You know, these are all people that really has influenced my work and has really supported me and encouraged me to even do better. Because trust me, it's difficult working in this country, especially the sector that we are in. You need to have a thick skin. You need to have a double standard work ethic <laughs> for some reason, because you have to work three times harder than any other country because we have limited resources here and opportunities as well which makes it even more difficult and the culture that people still don't value the art that much you know i've been you know some people try to talk me out of it so many times like you're wasting your time why don't you want to do something else or just focus on your media work and i'm like no so now that i'm beginning to get the recognition they're beginning to understand oh so there's future in it and imagine if yeah. you had decided, oh, exactly. I will not get, follow this because of all of these people saying I will not make it. But here you are today, girl, yes. breaking barriers. Yes. Don't <laughs> let anybody talk you out of what yes. you're doing. As long as you love it, you're committed, you're willing to work hard and develop yourself, you're going to go really far. It might take time, <laughs> but you will get there. <laughs> yes. Okay. What is your relationship with Afrosel? 
And how has the company supported you on your journey? And why do you like working for AfriCell, with AfriCell? So I work, I've worked with AfriCell close to six years now uh, on part-time basis mainly on the radio side and commercial and here and there and this year last year i got to host the very big beer star which was introduced by um Africel as well please give Africel a big round of applause for bringing this show to live in gambia Abraham, let me help you okay you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen beautiful viewers Everybody listening to us on Afri Radio and our other radio partners. But tonight is the show down. Now the fact that um, they're able to empower young people is one thing that I love about the company. Over the past few years that I've worked with them, I think they've created room for me to also grow and expand. And um, always encouraging me with all of my crazy initiatives. Anytime I come there and say I want to do something, they'll be like, why not? I mean, I remember when Kamil was here and I told him about Let's Talk Show and he's like, let's do it. <laughs> you know, he gave me all the support that I needed. And now the Let's Talk Show is one of the biggest shows on radio in the Gambia. That is a mentorship program um, that has featured a lot of young people and inspirational people as well. And the fact that the environment is so friendly. I mean, I have the best radio manager ever who is very empowering and motivates us to do better. Anytime he comes across across something that we can read and help us develop ourselves, he will always share, you know, and we have a lot of passionate young people who are also within the company, who understands the value of what we do. And yes, basically, I think this is what kept me there over the past few years. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And um, what are your aspirations? It's a whole lot, but I will just break it down to say um, I wish to see this country empower more young people, especially women within the performing art and the media, to give them the space that they need to develop themselves. And I must say Africell is doing amazingly that, I mean, um, supporting art in all sectors, the music industry, you know, and encouraging young people with talent to promote them and see them grow as well. And um, I wish to also see the same thing happen with the movie industry, the theater of the Gambia, to grow and be given that support that it needs to be recognized on all platforms, locally and internationally. Um, in the next few years, I aspire to see Gambia on Hollywood, you know, winning awards and just getting on Netflix and all those big major mainstreams where we would be seen and our work would also be seen. And we have a beautiful culture. I've seen a lot of producers who are working on some of these stories that people can relate with from the Gambia. And I hope we will make a shine on that very soon, inshallah. <laughs> but we already have you. Yeah. In front, so. We're trying. <laughs> um, so, what advice um, would you give to other young Gambian women who might be um, dreaming of a career in media but don't know where to start? What advice? When I was starting media, I was like any of you out there, no experience, didn't know what the outcome would have come or be. I just said, you know what, I'm going to try it out. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, I'll know this is not my path. So one, I'll say don't be scared to try things out. Don't be too hesitant or you know thinking you are not good enough have self-confidence love what you do it's very important don't do it because you've seen someone successful in that area and you also want to you know just be known just be seen for the fun of that but love what you do and you're gonna grow um, make sure you learn okay learn if you can't go to university there are so many sites on the internet now where you can access um, educational materials or programs where you can improve yourself keep up the standard because media revolves every year you have to keep up with standard what is trending what is happening how the world is moving with technology you have to keep up with that every single day and be committed with it be disciplined you know and um, yeah basically that's it just love what you do be disciplined commitment and learn 
to always develop yourself and you're gonna go a long way trust me <laughs> well here you have it um, you've heard what Mariama has to say thank you so much for answering all those questions and also for all the advice that you've given to upcoming and aspiring mm -hmm women that, that want to join the media and congratulations once again on uh, being recognized thank and, you and uh, keep breaking barriers girl thank keep you <laughs> this was a good one thank you so much Yo.